Okay. Take a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths. And think of all the little cells in your body filling up with breath energy. You're not pumping air to them, it's just you're allowing energy to flow wherever it can. Let all the cells be filled. And let them stay full. Try not to squeeze things out or squeeze, push things in. You're trying to give rise to a sense of fullness and ease. And that fullness gets squeezed out, then it's not going to have a chance to grow. But each time you breathe in and breathe out, allow that wherever your sense of fullness in the body, allow it to stay there, allow it to be untrampled by the breath. You might try relaxing your hands, relaxing your feet, to see if that helps create this sense of fullness. And then try to maintain it. Notice when the mind moves in a way that seems to damage that sense of fullness again, then stop. This is one of the reasons why John Lee recommends developing a sense of sangwega before you meditate, because it's a lot easier if you notice that the things you're thinking about are things you were just a few minutes ago thinking about sangwega and thinking about how meaningless they were or how much you really couldn't place any happiness in them. That makes it a lot easier to let go of these things. And same with spreading thoughts of metta. If while you're meditating, thoughts of someone who's harmed you or harmed people you love come up, you have to remember, well, I spread metta out of that person just a few minutes ago. And there's no reason to wish ill will for that person. I don't get anything from it, and I'm certainly not getting anything from it right now. In other words, you learn how to think your way to seeing how your thoughts are not worth following, especially if they're thoughts outside of the body, outside of the breath. If they're thoughts inside the body, inside the breath, okay, those are okay. You can use those to contemplate how to keep this sense of fullness going. It's in this way that direct a thought and evaluation protect your sense of fullness and refreshment the breath. In other words, you use your powers of thinking for a good purpose. It's not that thinking is bad or that thinking is good. You've got to, have to learn how to use your thinking in a skillful way. Use it for the sake of stillness rather than for the sake of distur disturbance. Now, when the stillness rises, all then all you have to do is protect it, protect it, protect it, look after it. The Thai word is brakong, which means to protect and kind of hover around. Again, you don't want to squeeze it. It's like hovering around a little child who's just learning how to walk. If you grab hold of the child, the child will never get a sense of balance. If you're too far away, the child could fall down easily. So you're hovering around just in case the child falls, and there your hands are to pick him, pick him up before he hits the ground. That's the kind of attitude you want to have to the well-being that you can create while you're starting to meditate. In the beginning, it may be just a very gentle, just learning how to walk kind of well-being. And then after it gets more and more solid, more and more secure on its feet. They don't have to be quite so active in looking after it. Then the mind can settle down even further. This is how you use your thinking to bring your thinking to a peaceful end or to a peaceful resting spot. That's one of the strategies the Buddha uses over and over again. There's so many places where he has you use things that eventually you're going to let go. And the letting go is made a lot easier because you've learned how to use them skillfully. 